Hey PV, I know you got a lot of uh, cameras. Which one are you shooting with today? It's a bit of a surprise. I'm not shooting digital today. I got my beautiful little Roly Flex. So why film? So going back to the basics, right? Um, you know, with film, you're not bothered about menus, right? There is no menu system here. You just have your aperture ISO. ISO also is fixed because you're shooting film. So you just have your aperture and your um, shutter speed to work with. So you don't have to think too much about the camera or any technicality. So what you really focus on is the light. And I have black and white film, so I don't care about the color. So it's basically light, contrast, and composition. So that's the bare minimum. That's the basics, right? So sometimes it, it feels good not to really, uh, you know, do too much of menu mongering, as I call it, and, uh, you know, just stick with uh, the basics. So so once, once in a while, I feel like going back to the basics, and that's the day I pick my film camera, although I've started to do it more often nowadays, so. I see some good textures there. Let's try something there. I want some good contrasty light. So how many shots do you think I shot till now? None, right? And we've been, I think we've been here around 10 minutes. So that's what film does to you. It slows you down because obviously I just, I have a medium format, so I just have 12 exposures. And I want to be sure that whatever I'm shooting is fairly contrasty and I know the sun's not in our favor today, but I want to ensure there is some contrast, something standing out, there's some interest in the picture and I'm still not being able to find that. Now, if this were digital, I would have already shot 50 shots, right? I would have shot anything and everything that I thought kind of looked good, but in film, I got to be sure. So that's what film does to you. It slows you down. Yeah, you got to be really sure of something's really happening there and it's worth clicking. So that's one more reason I should film. So, uh, so metering is almost taken for granted in digital, right? Because your camera does everything for you. Now some cameras do it, even film cameras do it, but to be precise, you use this. So that's one more thing. I mean, uh, I spoke about going back to the basics. So this is what it's all about. It, it reinforces your concepts uh, of exposure, metering. So I'm trying the zone system here, just trying to see, make sure that the sky is not blown. So this is another advantage of shooting film. It really makes you very, very conversant and an expert in these things. A meter tells me F11 at a shutter speed of 60. I have 400 ISO film in this. Now, I don't want to blow the sky. I put it at around zone 9, I think, maybe 8, and then the bridge at mid gray. So let's shoot and see what happens. That was our first shot. So getting some good patterns here, the arches and the reflections, yeah. and then the uh, vanishing point, the leading line. It looks like an interesting one. I already metered. Digital detox, right? It's a reality. And that's one more reason I should film. Uh, so funny fact is that there are about 3.8 billion pictures uploaded to social media and about 720,000 hours of videos uh, uploaded to social media every day and obviously all of us contribute. Now that's just uploaded, so imagine how many are shot, how many are uh, stored somewhere in hard drive or in the cloud. So so yeah, I like to give myself a digital detox sometimes, not sit in front of the screen. So when you shoot film, now I can shoot this, develop this, 
and then print it without going to the computer screen at all. Of course, I can scan it using the computer screen, but I don't do that. Well, I will do that for the video, <laughs> but I can look at the negative and then I can straight go and uh, decide which one to print and print it on, uh, you know, photo paper. So no screen, no digital content, no creating digital flash. One more reason to shoot so. The shooting film is all about the process. And if you don't enjoy the process, you won't enjoy shooting film. Now digital, it's instant gratification. And it's all about getting a fantastic, stunning output. But film is more about enjoying the process because there is a process. And if you don't follow the process, you will fail. Uh, it's true about uh, shooting, it's true about developing, it's true about printing. So, um, especially if you're shooting large format, if there are 10 steps you need to follow to the T and if you don't follow even one step, you're probably not going to get your picture. So, so that really makes you process oriented, which then carries on to your digital photography and makes you extremely flexible and knowledgeable and grants you a lot of expertise on just simple photography itself. So that's one more reason to shoot film. Another reason why I shoot film is because I think over the years, it has helped me embrace imperfections. Uh, you know, when you shoot digital, we are too hung up on the outcome. You know, we want stellar pictures. We want brilliant pictures, which get a lot of likes and validation on uh, social media. But when I shoot film, I'm shooting things which are intimate, uh, which create memories. I'm more focused on the process. It's a kind of a labor of love. So I'm not really bothered about the perfection. Sometimes the focus might be off. Uh, sometimes I have to push the film, so I might get grains. If I shoot uh, you know, on high ISO film, uh, naturally I get a lot of grain in the film. So those are certain imperfections. Sometimes if your camera and your lens, are, uh, your lens is really old, you might get light leaks in it. Uh, so those are certain imperfections you start living with. Now, imperfection doesn't necessarily mean a bad picture. A bad picture is something which doesn't have light, contrast, color, you know, color balance or color contrast or composition. Now that's a bad picture and that's a bad picture in digital and in film. So film photography doesn't give you the license uh, to shoot bad pictures, but it does give you license to have imperfections in your picture. Uh, so which then transcends to digital photography where you start realizing that, uh, you know, a little bit of grain or a light leak somewhere, those are not necessarily bad things. Or if you missed focus, but caught a decisive moment, those are things which, you know, you can embrace. And uh, as long as you're able to tell a story, that's absolutely valid. So another reason to, uh, to really embrace uh, film photography is that, uh, you know, film photography takes the equipment out of the equation in picture making. Uh, so if you had shot in the 80s, 90s, uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, you bought a camera and you probably stuck on with that camera for like a decade, bare minimum. It's not like you could afford or just buy a camera unless you were like a really big money making professional. Uh, you did not change cameras every two years, which is what we do now, including me. I, I change cameras very often, but uh, the thought now being that the better equipment I have, the better I'll get at the picture making process. But that that's not true. That could be true to an extent, but largely it's not true because obviously your technique needs to improve. You need to understand you know, storytelling, picture making process, and really focus on what you need to focus on, uh, like light, color, contrast, composition. So you, you really don't bother about what's in your hand. The communication then is between your mind, your vision, your pre-visualization, observation, and that aids your picture making process. The camera just becomes a tool to aid picture making. It's the medium in which you capture the picture, but it necessarily does not interfere in the process of picture making. So that's another reason.
so obviously the light's not good it's not been good for the last few days uh, well there is ample light but not contrasty light the way i like it so let's take a reading i'm i'm taking an ambient reading uh not reflected it's about 2.8 at 250 let's see let's shoot at that and see what happens So we're in Hutto, a uh, pretty interesting place. On the roadside, you'll find a lot of hippopotamus statues. Uh, so the story goes that I think there was a circus a hundred years back or something, and then a hippo escaped, and uh, apparently it was found in Hutto. So you'll see a lot of lot of statues, and it's a pretty interesting place to take some pictures. Let's move. Let me see if I can get three hippos in one shot. So we finished our roll, uh, Tri X 400. Uh, throughout this, these 12 frames, the light was not as I would have liked it to be. As I said, I love shooting in contrasty, sunlit kind of scenario, but that's okay. I mean, I can use a high contrast developer like a D19 or something, but I'm going to just use the normal. Uh, Ilfosol from Ilfer to develop it and see what happens. And if I need to print it, I can always increase the contrast in print. So let's see. Let's see what we got. Uh, it's uh, it's it's a rainy season and it was cloudy all through. So let's see how that works. So, what do you think about shooting on film? Are you intrigued and lured by film photography? Follow this channel for more such videos and a lot of information on shooting with film. Leave your comments on what you think about shooting film. Thank you.